Morning, everyone. Uh, just a few remarks, and then we'll go to the questions. Uh, you've all heard the explanation that the minister has given uh, for the notice that went out yesterday. What we haven't heard is an explanation of why it took two hours to let people know that, in fact, there was not a crisis. Uh, that's a long time for people to be waiting to find out what's really going on. We need a full investigation of the initial error, and we need a full investigation of why it took two hours to let the public know what was going on. That approach, that failure to actually deal with the problem in a timely way is something that's really notable about this particular incident. And with that, I'm open to questions. Peter, in terms of the, um, the, the notification, obviously, like you know, they sent out this false message and uh, uh, you know, they're, they're making their investigation or whatever. Um, uh, have you heard anything from uh, OPG in terms of whether there was, in fact, anything to be alarmed about Sunday morning? I have heard nothing. Uh, whether there is something to be alarmed about or not, I can't say. But I have heard nothing from o OPG about it. And um, do you think that, uh, you know, we mostly don't spend a lot of time thinking about our nuclear uh, power sector. Do you think this um, could, uh, you know, cause people or is this going to cause the New Democrats to rethink uh, Ontario's uh, uh, energy policy in the future? At this point, we're focused on the emergency notification. This is a vital system, and I don't want that matter to be overshadowed. We need to understand what happened. If people lose confidence in this system, the ability to use it when there is a real emergency will be impaired. That's dangerous. Questions about energy policy? Happy to answer another day. But today, our focus is making sure that there's an emergency notification system that people have confidence in, and that they will act on if and when something real happens. You know, we asked the minister yesterday uh, why there aren't more checks before a message like that would go out. She argued in part that if there were too many checks, there could be a delay if there was a real emergency, essentially. I wonder what you would say. Well, again, that's why I think there has to be a thorough investigation, an independent investigation, to look at this. I'm not going to rely on the word of the minister. I think we need a person familiar with this sector, these protocols, to look at this and come back and tell us what happened and why. Pouvez-vous nous expliquer en français qu'est-ce qui vous inquiète à l'heure actuelle? Um, C'est nécessaire de savoir pourquoi il y a eu un délai de deux heures pour l'information qu'il n'y a pas d'une crise. C'est le cœur de ce problème. Alors, qu'est-ce qui s'est passé, selon vous? Je ne sais pas à ce moment-ci, je ne sais pas. Mais il y a eu une, une notification et puis deux heures pour clarification qu'il n'y a pas de crise. Ce n'est pas acceptable. C'est dangereux. Est-ce que la confiance du public, est-ce qu'il y a un, un bris du lien de confiance? Oui, oui, complètement. Il y a un bris de confiance et c'est nécessaire d'avoir un système dans lequel les gens ont la confiance. Absolument nécessaire. Avez-vous peur qu'une prochaine fois, s'il y avait une alerte, euh, les gens vont se dire, ah, c'est peut-être une fausse alerte, finalement, les oui. gens ne croiront plus, là? C'est le problème. Exactement ça. Si les gens n'ont pas, si pas de confiance dans le système, c'est dangereux parce que si nous avons une crise, en fait, les gens disent, disent il n'y a pas de crise, c'est simplement un problème, une erreur. C'est dangereux. Peter, yeah. oh, oh, what, are, oh, yeah, go ahead. what do you think we need to see in the investigation for that confidence in the system to be maintained? I, I think a few elements. One, there needs to be independence so people don't just think it's the minister looking after herself or the Ford government looking after itself. They need to have confidence in the person who's doing the investigation. We need to know what precisely happened and what system failures there were that allowed it to happen. And second, and, and after that, we need to know what the system failures were that made people wait for almost two hours before they were given an all clear. 
I think without that, you're not going to get the confidence in people that the problem has been identified and corrected. It has to be there. You, you alluded to this earlier about, you know, the next time an alert goes out, people might, you know, question whether or not yeah. it is the real thing. Um, what, what kind of guarantees are you looking for that uh, would actually give people those assurances that, okay, we've, we've completely fixed uh, the emergency management system? Well, at, at a minimum, an independent understanding of what happened. People have to have confidence that the investigation was thorough, uh, that there was no covering things over so the minister or the ministry looked good or the government looked good. No, people have to feel, yeah, I trust this person who investigated. The facts are on the table. So first of all, we know what happened. And secondly, recommendations that will prevent this in future based on what we find. And I guess, Colin, the last thing is implementation of those recommendations. All human systems are fallible. Let's face that. But we need to know that the maximum is being done to minimize errors and to correct them quickly when they're made. Do you feel that people could ever have full trust in the system after something like this, after, you know, being woken up multiple times throughout the night with an Amber Alert that you really can't do anything about because you're in bed sleeping at that time? Um, do, do you feel like people are ever going to have full trust in this system, or does it need to be, you know, scrapped and maybe s start from scratch? I can't. I can't give you a definitive answer. All I can say is people can have more or less trust in the system. After yesterday, they have less trust in the system. Action has to be taken to boost trust up. Again, I don't know what other emergencies will happen in Ontario. A sudden a flash flood. Uh, years ago, we had the chlorine train derail in Mississauga. We have had in the past problems with the Pickering nuclear power, power plant. Things come up. We need to be able to tell people that they will be notified and they have to have confidence in it. So we need to take steps to maximize their confidence. Peter, can I ask you about the, the wording of the message, which seemed to be uh, almost designed to confuse people? I mean, it just said there's been an incident. Watch TV. I mean, is, is this, is this, this is the template they're going to use when something bad really does happen? Isn't that just, uh, like, doesn't that break every communications rule in the book about telling people what's going on? I'm not a communicator, but I have to say when I read it, I was just confused by it. We've got emergency crews going in, but nothing's happened, but you should be alert that something's gone wrong. Yeah, it, it, was, it was poorly done. I agree. You, when you read it, when you did your cell phone go off? Did you hear it yourself? No, did I you was reach for the iodine pills right away. Or? <laughs> um, I didn't get it at the time. I picked it up around. I don't know. I don't know why, but I got it around 9 p.m. Um, and like, sorry, 9 a.m. 9 a.m. Um, and so I was just going through emails and and tweets, and suddenly, yikes! Uh, this shows up. Um, when I read it, I wondered what on earth are they talking about? And so I would say for anyone in that 10 kilometer radius, they would have had the same, what does this mean kind of response. Would you be in that 10 kilometer radius? No. Just probably just outside, I guess. Eh? No, I, I'm just here at church in Wellesley. So I'm in the 50 kilometer zone, not the 10 kilometer zone. But so it didn't, it didn't show up on your phone at all? Because I know some people, um, it showed up, but the, the tones that sound when you get an Amber Alert didn't, didn't That's go right. off for them. And my partner's, on my partner's phone, it showed up sideways. And when she tried to turn the phone so she could read it, it disappeared. So Peter, does this raise broader questions um, than just what happened here? Uh, does it raise the issue of whether these alerts are effective in reaching everyone that they should reach in a, a real emergency? This is, is this the best and only way to reach people? It's a good question, Antonella, and my hope is that anyone who investigates this situation will look at those issues as well. Uh, but it certainly reached an awful lot of people. That's pretty clear. It wasn't 50 people or 100 likely hundreds of thousands, if not millions. So it did reach a lot of people. And obviously, there are holes in it if some people didn't get it at all, like me, until much later, uh, or my partner.
didn't have widespread um, movement of people at the time. Do you think people have faith in the system? Do, do you think a lot of them just assumed it was a mistake? I can't answer that. I don't know. I don't, I don't know what went through the minds of the people immediately around the plant. You'd have to ask them. Mais ce que vous dites, c'est que le système ne fonctionne pas, là, si on comprend ce que vous dites. Uh, c'est clair qu'il y a des trous dans le système et c'est nécessaire pendant um, ce, ce recherche de regarder les trous comme ça. Uh, the nuclear industry, uh, people who know about these can-do reactors and experts and so on say that they're extraordinarily safe with uh, multiple backup systems, multiple control rooms, three or four different ways, multiplied a, a number of different ways to shut the thing down. There's the possibility of an explosion or a meltdown or a Chernobyl or whatever is very, very remote. Do you buy all that? Uh? Well, in general, it's um, a rare incident. But I just want to emphasize, because something is rare doesn't mean that it's not consequential, which is why you have to have an emergency alert system that people have confidence in. I'm going to set aside the energy issues. Just again, if you're going to have an emergency response, an emergency alert system, people have to feel when they get it that it's serious. They have to be alert. They have to check out what's going on. Uh, and that's where we need to focus at this point. But just for the clarity's sake, are, are you, you are opposed to nuclear power, or do you want to phase out nuclear power, or do you believe we need, need to keep nuclear power? Well, our, our party's position has been to look at the numbers and do business analysis when we make any decision on nuclear power. But, but our focus here today and now is the emergency response system. Don't let's get caught up with other issues and let this one drop. That's a debate we could get into endlessly. What we need to have dealt with now is what failed with this emergency alert system. Everyone good? Thank you, merci. Okay, merci beaucoup.